Hello everyone, I'm Luke Neller and this is Best Replays of the Week. In this episode, you'll see French light tanks driven with style, learn an important lesson about trigger discipline, and see a true sniper at work. Let's get the show on the road. Our Scout of the Week is a sire solemn from the North American server. We like to see mobile and entertaining scouting, and boy does he deliver. The battle is a tier 9 encounter on Malinovka, and our intrepid scout is at the bottom of the list in his EOC AMX. As the clock ticks down, he comments Sui Scout time and puts the pedal to the metal. The little machine races forward, cresting a small hill at full speed to take a peek. Yo! That's eight enemies revealed in one high-speed pass. The EOC speeds away as allied forces open fire on the targets. A second pass reveals two more, and one enemy is already down for the count. As long as the EOC lives, they are like targets at a shooting range. And they know it too. As soon as it's spotted again, the EOC comes under heavy fire. A shot strikes home, but it only disables a track. A repair kit takes care of the minor problem and the little machine is back in action. More shots fly in, but the EOC seems too fast for a clear contact. Dirt flies high just behind its tracks, but the suicide scout is far from dead. But then, disaster! An impressive shot from the IS-6 leaves the speed demon with just 21 HP. At least it was a low roll and no systems were damaged. Nevertheless, maybe it's better to stop tempting fate here. Looping around to the capture zone doesn't take long. The EOC repeats its pop-up trick to make sure the enemies don't have the same idea. He then settles into a safe spot in the circle. Encounter mode captures take a long time, but it's a good way to help the team win now that he can't afford to take any more damage. Our scout settles down to watch the battle on the hill. Eventually a friendly IS arrives to speed the capture along. The game is won and the excitement is over. Or is it? The T-34-2 advances on the capture circle, thoughts of revenge and destruction on its mind. Asaya Solem gets into position and puts the final shot into the enemy just as the capture reaches 100%. Pure perfection. The invader ending was just a bit of fun, but the scouting work made a huge difference in winning the game. 11 enemies spotted and over 7,000 points in spotting damage. Nice! This week's crucial contribution drives the little tank that can. The damage output of the T-49 is incredible if you can land those huge shells. Dodolfi from the EU server makes it look easy. The match is a tier 10 standard battle at Lakeville. Dodolfi finds a good position and reaches out to touch someone. The bulldog catches fire and barely survives the hit. An artillery strike finishes it off unspotted. Dodolfi waits in ambush for a while and stalks into the city. The T-71 should be a difficult target, but it looks like the T-49 is armed with anti-tank missiles. 6 HP left, and the artillery is ready to mop up the remains. The AMX-50B is a tempting target. The headshot does a ton of damage, but stopping to aim costs him a hit from the Tiger too. Artillery and tank shells rain down as the T-49 falls back to reload. The burning E-100 is a dangerous target. Dodolfi takes a Hail Mary shot, which fails to connect. He baits the E-100 into returning fire and goes in for a proper one. Critical hit with a second to last standard shell. The E-100 comes out just as reload is done and gets the last one to its side for good measure. Another E-100 is attempting to get at the friendly arty and gets the next shell right in the engine block. The enemy catches fire, but only for a moment. A long-range shot on a Tiger II fails to connect, and Dodolfi decides it's time to go hunting. The artillery tries to run for cover, but it's too late, and the massive HE round rips it apart. Now the contributor is in his element, behind enemy lines and with plenty of cover. An ally in a T-54 is spoiling the stealth approach, but the enemy WZ-132 takes a show in the face anyway. A little later, there's an opportunity to put in a second shot, and that is all it takes. The next target is a Tiger too, and you already know how this goes. The 400 meter range is not a problem. Didolfi loads and shoots, dealing damage at his leisure. Eventually the enemies start to run out, and Didolfi moves in to finish the job. 
The T-30 receives a shell to the back of the head, but it's too tough to go down from that. Another headshot. Wow, this may take a while. The E-50M joins in, but it should have learned from the sniper's caution. Dodolfi puts in one more shell and the match is over. Good game. Impressive accuracy and great tactics from the little tank with the big gun. Over six and a half thousand points of damage. Tank sniper and ace. Congratulations, Dodolfi. A well-deserved crucial contribution award. This week's confederate is Team Mahma from the EU cluster. The battle is a tier 8 encounter at Redshear, and he's driving the British Comet. Timama heads for the high ground and starts looking for targets. He takes several quick shots at distant targets. The first hit lands on a VK, which gets finished off by the advancing allies. Now that the gun has been calibrated, things get easier. The Lurvi gets some attention, as does the 88 Jagdtiger. The TD is too much to take head on, so the Comet looks for a softer target. The 112 is too tough as well, but once again, the return shot is masterfully dodged. The Jagdtiger shows its soft backside and gets a little sting. The 112 exposes a weak spot and gets set on fire. Next, a Stura Imel is revealed and only barely manages to hide. Timahma tries his luck with some blind shots. He clearly doesn't believe in bringing ammo back to the depot. Where to now? Maybe, yes, the TD is visible again. One more shot and it's out of the picture. Luckily, the 112 misses its return shot. Timahma sticks with his game plan. He holds the high ground next to the capture zone, harassing and supporting allies as opportunities arise. It's working, but the enemy team are in the lead. He's engaging the Lurvi again at long range when the Comet takes the first hit. Luckily, low caliber, but Timahma pulls into cover. The Comet has its strengths, but armor isn't one of them. This 1375 needs to go. Team Mahma charges into close combat and makes short work of the target. The finishing blow comes from an ally, but as long as the enemy goes down, it's all good. The next mark is a VK3601. The lower tier heavy tank is focusing on an ally and gets dismantled without returning fire. The score is nearly even now. What's next? The T29 kills an ally in the distance and Team Mahma heads that way. The capture siren goes off and then an IS is met on the way. Team Mahma decides to engage the enemy who is right in front of him. The IS takes damage, but even premium rounds have trouble penetrating at this distance. Even worse, after a few more shots, the Comet is down to five HE shells. Three of those are fired at the IS, but to little effect. Team Mahma decides to deal with the cap instead. Damn, where did that 12 ton come from? The French autoloader punches holes in the Comet, while the two HE rounds leave it with 25 HP. A brilliant ram kills the enemy, but what can he do about the E25? Nothing, the game is over, and a round from the IS blows the Comet apart. Confederate, ace tanker, and 41 hits scored on the enemy. For this valiant effort, Team Mahma is our Confederate of the Week. Maybe think about ammo expenditure in the future though. The Defender of the Week is Vilnius 97 from the EU Cluster. He rides into battle with his French AMX 1390. All speed and no armor. Let's see how it goes. The scene is a standard battle on Tundra. Vilnius 97 turns east, accelerates, and rear ends an E75 at 55 kilometers an hour. Ouch, he may need those hit points later. But never mind, the AMX races onwards, spotting a T30 lurking in the distance. There would be an opportunity to fire some shots, but his sixth sense warns him off. Another peak reveals an SPG. The shot misses, but an ally takes the kill. Assistant damage is good too. The T-30 is a dangerous foe and is looking this way. A chancy shot goes high and another enemy puts a shell in the AMX's ammo rack. Undaunted, Vilnius 97 fixes his ammo rack and what follows is a textbook demonstration on how to play the AMX 1390. Nicely done. There's plenty of time to change position while waiting for the reload. Reload isn't quite ready in time, but the Waffentrager E100 isn't going anywhere. Two shots soften it up nicely, and an ally seals the deal. Vilnius looks for a target for the remaining shells, but nothing looks soft enough. There, the big TD was too tough from the front, but now it's looking away and showing its side. Once again, the little tank charges in and goes for the throat. 
As before, an ally puts in the final shot. This one was a bit of a kill steal though, as Vilnius had it in the bag. And E75 gets the two remaining shells in the back, and then it's time to make tracks. And it's just in time too. The magazine is nearly loaded, so Vilnius dives into the melee once again. The T57 Heavy turns to fight the smaller autoloader, but an ally takes it out before it can fire a shot. The other three shells are pumped into an object, and then it's time to run again. Except this time there's another factor at play. The enemies have been threatening a cap, and as the 90 races back home, the last defender's symbol blinks out. A shell hits the back of the 90, but fails to do significant damage. Vilnius isn't so lucky the second time. The track breaks, and without a repair kit, he's forced to wait out the repair while the object loads its gun. The repair is done, but it's just taken too long. I told you he'd missed those hit points lost right at the start. But no matter, 17 hit points and all systems are go. Two shells draw across above the speeding tank just before Vilnius reaches cover. There's a moment of hesitation, and then he's off on the attack run. One, two, three, four, five. Vilnius is down to premium ammo, and at point blank range, the ST1 just melts away. Beautiful. Another reload, and a look at the map reveals that there is only one enemy left. Vilnius gives us all she's got, but doesn't quite get there in time. Wow. 88 defense points, ace tanker, nearly perfect accuracy, and a textbook replay on how to play the challenging AMX 1390. Excellent work, Defender! Shockwave007 is a face who will try to remain unseen as he earns his place in our Hall of Fame as a renowned sniper. He drives the large Nash Hunter battle on the dunes of San River, equipped with only a few APCR rounds for an emergency. Taking a classic spot, hidden by camo net and paint, he takes aim on his opponent's lead machine. The game is on! His patience is rewarded with a direct hit on the Wolverine. It dashes for cover, but that won't help him as Shockwave's second shell puts the animal down for good. Not learning from his teammate's mistake, a T-3485 follows suit, right into the crosshairs of our hunter. With precision, Shockwave pierces his target, forcing them to withdraw. But there's no running from an elite sniper. Without missing a beat, he pins his prey in place and keeps firing until it stops moving. A large explosion brings Shockwave from his gun sights, long enough to realize his position is compromised. No need to panic, he redeploys. Breathe in, breathe out. Fire! Nailed it! A professional doesn't need to celebrate. Well, not until after the battle anyway. As cool as ice, Shockwave triple taps an annoyingly close KV-1 and returns to his crow's nest. No targets. It looks like this way is clear. His radio blips with information about a new enemy assault pushing in from the southwest. Fresh meat. A chance shot from 378 meters clips the top of the dunes instead, but Shockwave isn't paid to bring shells home and tries again. Suddenly, a Hellcat breaks from the pack and darts towards the entrenched allied line. Shockwave quickly adjusts his aim and slams a near-fatal wound into it. He leaves it to his allies, but as he scans the horizon, his optics fill with the end of a barrel. The decision comes in an instant. Trade. Decent choice, but now the Nash Horn's badly wounded. The position is lost. Fall back! Clearly Shockwave is shaking now as his next few shots fail to secure hits. Breathe. Focus! That's better. The nerves are settled and it's back to business as usual. But now there are hostiles in all directions, and picking an area to cover is becoming increasingly harder. Target! No time to get skittish. Focus! Nicely done, but time to do a 180 and engage the Chai To. Damn, that one got away. New hostile sighted. The 88. This could be a problem. But ha! The first AP shot went through! However, before it can be finished, the rangefinder loses track of the target, and after a few blind shots, the loader reports that only two AP shells remain. Still, Shockwave has the 6 APCR rounds he brought with him and 4 HE if needed. Things should be okay, but no more chance shots. A brief pause as his teammates entrust the defense of the northern sector to him and push south. That 88 foolishly assumes our sniper has moved and full powers down the dune just to become the ninth kill. Shortly thereafter, the Chaito attempts to sneak up on the sniper's position, but he finds him repositioned and able to secure his 10th kill. At last, the sniper is able to go on the offensive. He goes to the enemy base and puts their veteran artillery unit down with his final AP shell. 
awarded patrol duty and Paul's medal whilst using all of his AP and just two APCR rounds at an impressive 85% accuracy rating, Shockwave is without a shadow of a doubt our Sniper of the Week. That's all for this week. Remember to like it if you liked it, subscribe if you want to be notified about new episodes, and I'm sure to read what you thought in the comments down below. I'm Luke Neller, see you there.